virtuous pedophiles. In my 28 years of being alive, those are two words I never suspected would be used together in a sentence unironically. But yet, here I sit, having heard those words. I mean, it's almost like the only reason human speech even exists is so that we can convey better how stupid we actually fucking are. To use words like this, virtuous pedophiles. And if you are equally as confused by those words being used together as I was when I heard them, then congratulations, you are neither delusional nor are you retarded. Now, I promised you all a video on Growly, also known as the Almighty Torah, and that video's coming, but I honestly needed to make this one first because it contextualizes a lot of the things that are going to become a little bit more clear in that video, such as the mentality of people who white knight for Growly, as well as the sorts of arguments that they're prone to making. That's what this commentary is going to be about, because we need this before we can get into that. That's, an, that's a video that, that just needs a little bit more context than I was ready for. <laughs> and once again, I'm going to have to thank my good friend for no good reason, for having the fortitude to sit down for three hours in a conversation with one such person, a furry by the name of Farlato. Now, if you're a big fan of Medicare, or you've just been on the internet for a while, or frequented places like 4chan, you've probably heard expressions like playing with trains, or fourth dimensional chess. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, this person, Farlato, he is beyond the measure of either one of those things. He's playing with fucking fourth dimensional trains, okay? He is beyond reality. No potential amount of Rick and Morty watching, no, no measurement of anything you could ever achieve or study will ever let you ascend to levels that this mythological being, this higher power of autism, has ascended to. I mean, it, it also depends on the type of venue that it is, it depends on the size of all the right, convention, so it depends doctor, on the kind of things I, that are going on at the convention. It's, right, a, it's a very, right, it, it requires a lot of, a lot I, more concrete I, data for me I'd to like give you to, a straight I'd like answer. To, I'd like to add, respond here, Dr. Dictator, Vor is present in every fandom, I don't believe you. Well, I don't sit there and peruse it to double check yeah. it every day. See, I'm, I'm, see, make, I'm making a general. The difference between furry and brony is that the subject matter of furry is not already consumerist in nature. Where brony, you're you're already consumerist. You're you're literally just fans of a Hasbro thing. <laughs> I just know it's everywhere because when I was on concept. Tumblr, it was well, places well, I didn't want to see. There are there are shows for Alito, such as Agretzico and um that one movie, fucking Zootopia, which are very, Ted very, very furry. furry baited. You know, they're, yeah. they're, they're a furry's yeah. wet they're... dream. I'm going to completely disprove Farlito's point right here with um, just a couple words. It's the circle of life. Okay, I think you all know what I'm getting at, so we're going to continue now because that's just a completely fucking retarded point. It's such a retarded point, it's a non-point. Because, like, not even just the Lion King. Which I've, I've I brought up in previous commentaries. It's it's also the fact that there's fucking Wiley e. Coyote, Zootopia, like FNGR was happy to point out. There's there's Sonic, which I know is his own fandom, but I consider that sort of an offshoot. I mean, if you go on DeviantArt, there's plenty of things you can obviously find of very centralized, consumer friendly things that have been completely perverted by the furry fandom. Just so just run that argument right up the fucking road, because nobody is gonna buy that. Nobody. Yeah, I, I don't like. <clears throat> there's a difference like furries have had to work long and hard to try and mend any kind of a bridge with their archons going out um it, it's why when things like lost pegasus went bad the people banded together to help get money to the show staff so they could get the fuck out of there whereas i probably assume furries less so <laughs> uh, furries is a lot more decentralized which is probably for the better, quite honestly. Um, if you had people in charge, you had some kind of, um, I, I, I guess, uh, standards? Yes, standards is the word we're looking for here. Some kind of standards, whatever those might be. Um, for better or for worse, I think it would improve, at least in some way, shape, and form. Uber Blue Dragon says, if I was on sh con chair, I wouldn't want the liability of having a pedo around a con where kids are welcomed. I wouldn't want the PR. That's fucking horrifying. Yeah. You'd... See, see, the very the, the issue that I would have is that you would need to be able to separate kids from adults in a way which is responsible, in a sense. Like, obviously, if a parent and a child ha ended up getting a hotel room in order to go to the convention, they will need to be able to gain access to that 
area. And the issue is that if you have adults who are not that child's guardian who is accompanying them, you have to make sure that they're that that's, you know, something which was approved of beforehand. And that's a logistical nightmare. What I would have said to this is I would give the, the con staff two alternatives. Ban him, ban kids from the convention. You yeah, can, you, you can, can absolutely you can, ban kids. You can absolutely you can, make it an 18 plus convention. Don't bullshit yeah. me. You know, most people probably would listen to what FNGR just said right there, and they wouldn't think that that's an unreasonable expectation. You should either ban people who would be a danger to minors or ban minors. That's kind of just common sense. But as you can probably tell by the runtime of this video, Farlito has not yet begun to tard out. That's what that's what Euroference did, and I don't see why furry cons aren't doing the same. Like Euro that's a lot of money you're throwing on the floor. <laughs> the an, I, I agree not, with them doing it, not but really. I really. Yeah. There's not. There's look. He, he, here's the fact of the matter. Like kids maybe make up not a lot of any con. Zero percent. It's almost all adults. It's it's all going to be bullshit. Like even if you said ten. Is it thirty percent? I don't have no idea. I'm, I'm making it. I'm doing. Yeah, it now. exactly. Well, you're in luck, Farlito. I did your legwork for you, and it turns out you're objectively wrong. And we're going to get into that right now. The website, Adjective Species, has actually done a little bit of research on this subject. And what they have here may shock you. A direct quote on their page about the age of an individuals within the fandom says this. It's interesting to note with age that the fandom seems to be migrating to a younger audience. As you move the slider from 2008 to 2010, note how the maximum shifts to a younger age group and a greater percentage of overall respondents. This is visible to many who have gone to major conventions over a period of time. The audience seems younger each year. This website has tracked the age demographics between the years of 2009 and 2016. Now what you'll notice is that for the year 2016, the latest year they have documented, the age demographics for individuals below 18 are close to, if not at their peaks out of all recorded years. Another important thing to note is that Growly was actually attending conventions between all of these years, meaning he had continuous access to minors. Not only that, an increasingly large number of them, as the data has shown. Farlito, next time do your own legwork. Maybe you won't look like a fucking retard when you do it. Yeah, I've never... it's... I can look it up. For much of the footage, you, you, you see that it's very much... Maybe you have people who are like 18 and 19... But they're still legally adults. Let me, let, that's me give usually... you a little, let me give you a little tip there about that. Even if it's only 10%, I, I hate to quote the Black Tooth Scourge about this, especially about BronyCon. Looking at your numbers, you can't really afford to throw that money on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> well, technically, you have to remember there are certain uh, uh, types you, of furries who you, are. You, you have who to have remember. A here, massive that's amount of surplus, there's, there's and there's they have no yeah. put that surplus, and they yeah, are no, willing to I'm, pay I'm, I'm, for a $3,000 yeah. convention. I'm I'm also willing to say I've I've heard rumor from Brony Inspector who said that Crowley was probably noted for probably paying a bit more to get his way in there. That that gives me all the pause in the world. If you're willing to pay that much to get in there, why do you want in there so bad? I mean, you can get yeah. sponsor status, so you can get you know, any you can get sponsor status. There's probably like I don't want to buy into sensationalist woo right away, you know? No, like he's he's there, big whoop. Uh, pop quiz to all of the people watching this who have children. Um, how does he's there big whoop tickle you as far as a defense for letting a registered sex offender be around children as we've established? Oh, did I not mention that Growly's a registered sex offender? Because he is. He was convicted after pleading no contest to the count of lewd or levacious acts with a child of 14 or 15 years old. He served the better part of three years in prison and spent three years on parole after. And he will also be on the sex offenders registry for the remainder of his life. But please, tell me how, uh, tell me how so he's there, big whoop. Tell me how that tickles you in the comments. I would love to know how you feel about that one. Especially when you factor in that he's been attending conventions for almost a decade now. Ooh. Bark and another another year. another thing Honestly. is, um, they wouldn't even like let their con attendants know about Growly being a pedophile and being around chips so that they could like they, like, they would delete the tweets. I I believe they made an initial tweet addressing the matter, and then they didn't. But want... then it got buried by under uh, by other tweets. They didn't want to fucking have other shit fucking pop up there, and they started you know fucking policing it. That rubbed well, me entirely. Also, you have to recognize the chance of mass hysteria. 
So I mean, would, you know, well, I that's, mean, that's about the optics. You get, Come on, you now. get, you get, you get mobs, and then people start doing shit. You know. I wouldn't be opposed to there being mass hysteria about a pedophile. I would not be opposed to people being worried hold, for the hold, street hold, safety hold of their it. children. Let me, let me, let me do the devil's advocate for Farlito on this one. You're running a con, right? You are legally yeah. responsible for the behavior at that con. Yes, you would. <laughs> yes, you would. Yeah, You'd be the way. yeah if, if they drag him out and someone beat him to death and he had surviving family members, they could sue the convention. There's a lot of issues That is there. correct. Yes, I understand that, but I would have never let him in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could like, prevent that. The issue, the issue is in that if you can't show that he has intent to, you know, do anything, it's possible that there would be a case for him to sue. Well, considering he's on the sex offenders registry, meaning it is a reasonable expectation that he may be a risk to minors, as well as others may be a risk to him because of that if he shows up, I think it's pretty reasonable to ban him for the safety of others and himself. I think that would be a very difficult case to win. Now, I'm not a legal expert, but I do feel like I can address this simply because I know you're not a legal expert either, Farlito, and you felt comfortable enough presenting that as your argument. See, here's the thing. With a lot of sexual situations with, like, a minor and an adult, there's there's almost always a power imbalance the adult holds all the authority over the kid just by virtue of their age and that's that's why basically any sexual interaction with minors is troublesome to say the least um yeah i, I see it the thing with the help thing though is there are people who D won't even admit what they did or will say I don't have an issue or something or they don't want help like there's a reason that people we don't have these services is because uh, I don't know how to say um, well if we're getting to them after they've you know done stuff and sort of lost the capacity to be conscious of you know that they have that paraphilia they're just that far gone at that point all you really can do is just you know put them put them in a place where they won't be a danger to society effectively what well, what needs to be done is something that's more proactive you know remove all the pressure people might feel you know because coming out and being like you know i might have this attraction to kids is not something which you can say and then be able to keep a lot of your you know dignity um, in a sense it's really frowned upon and people it, are, it's illegal there's a lot of well, it's, yeah there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a lot of social pressure here, I'll, which I'll, keeps, it's illegal which keeps it bottled hold, hold yeah it. let me but, let me let me try to do this there's one. a lot of social pressure which keeps them bottled up and because of that it can lead to individuals who would not have otherwise done it they end up not being able to cope with these urges for to the point that they become such a severity that they do act upon them when otherwise if they had received help they would not have this you know after listening to what i just did i think we're getting closer to ethical z vibes you know action over attraction here's the problem you sat there and said okay there's people not in charge of that okay so am i allowed to burn at the stake any pedophile who's able to have a regular relationship since they have alternatives and yet they decided to fuck kids. You're not going to give me that. You just, don't want, to. You just don't want to. You just that's don't want to. That's a incredibly kid. charged question. <laughs> Actually, that's a charged question. The gay pink dragon said as he crossed his arms disapprovingly. No, because no, they absolutely had the opportunity to pursue a regular healthy relationship. It, under your concept, if I were to take it, hypothetically, that would be something. Okay, fine. If you're able so to do that, so a yeah. pedophile who acts upon that urge, you don't have you to. Know? They had alternatives if they were in other regular relationships. Exactly. If they are, if if they are Here's a non-exclusive, again, and, I, and when I say this too, they are in capable a of a relationship with an adult, and they continue to act upon that urge, that is still not wrong. What I said, no, 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 sir. Not what I said. Wrong. I said to you, sir, if they let's say for okay, cool, are we able to forever make pariahs out of pedophiles who are already married then? You don't want to give it to it. You just don't like it. You just don't like it. <laughs> it just you're, makes see, you feel uncomfortable. Using, it's, see, I have to split hairs with you because you use pedophile as someone who has acted on it when pedophile in general is a term to denote anyone with such attractions. And generally, you use a different term such as, you know, offender when you talk about pedophiles who have acted upon their urges. Because... You have, like, 
innately designed to throw everyone, whether or not they have acted upon it together, into the same category, when that is a Farleo, really reductive way of if treating I, if it. I, if I may say, um, out of every pedophile that we've ever you know, talked about, heard, what have you. I've not met one pedophile who hasn't done something. There has been one pedophile, like every well, pedo- well, let me finish. Every pedophile we have come across has looked at child porn or lolly or has well, pursued someone on or offline. I don't, I've never, like everyone, you keep trying to say that there are people who don't want to act on it or or just have that urge but but i the, the thing is is i've never met one of those people i've never even like i've never talked to them I, i've never like that's, that's what's concerning is ever do you keep sounds, coming from the stance that's that sounds quite anecdotal well since we're still on the topic of growly and i do believe this point in the stream was still you know talking about him let's talk about something that's objective he was convicted for fucking a child how anecdotal does that sound, Farlato? Does that sound anecdotal? The court records, the conviction, the time he spent in prison, is that anecdotal? Or is that objective? Is that objective enough for you, you fucking moron? And it's not necessarily pertinent. You you saying that there aren't pedophiles because of your own personal experience. I you didn't know? say that at all. I wasn't exactly saying what you're insinuating, however. You're saying well, that no, with your I'm... personal experience you've never met pedophiles who, you know, oh, oh, are oh, oh, quote unquote oh, virtuous pedophiles who not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying well, to say Carl, that you're if not there's... giving any examples either. Yeah, like what I'm trying to say <laughs> is there's a mass volume of people out of all the volume of the people of pedophiles who come across, why is it we've never met one that hasn't wanted to act on their urges or has like that's what how is it you generally discover them that's the first question they announce it to the world on twitter or or they'll say they're a map i i call it pedophile oh, they say it, oh, 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 i'm gonna probably get heat for this you know my okay. example there was a wise man back in the day who managed to balance our budget that had this amazing thing it was called don't ask don't tell and if you're able to not molest a kid and you're able to be a little fucked up to your head then you should shut your mouth into the heat death of the universe and pray like hell nobody ever finds out and that's why Don't Ask, Don't Tell was an absolutely god-fucking-awful policy. Um, um, anyway. Your feels. See, Farlito, Farlito here brings up a very, very big problem with his own argument. He's convoluted to the point that it just doesn't make any sense. See, from what I can tell, he's arguing that pedophiles who don't act on these sorts of things shouldn't be demonized, but also saying that pedophiles who don't act on these things shouldn't have to hide it either, based on what I'm listening to, because he's just stated Don't Ask, Don't Tell was absolutely... You know, moronic. I'm paraphrasing, of course. But um, if they if they can feel like they aren't ever going to act on it, why would they feel like they need to publicly spread it around? See, that's a big fucking disconnect. See, it seems like it seems like this person, Farlito, actually wants this to be socially acceptable for people to be able to say, "Yeah, I'm attracted to kids," and not be judged harshly for it, despite the fact that it's a completely abhorrent thing. I, I mean, I can't be the only one who sees that, right? Uh, yeah. The browser is accessed. I swear to God, is it going to get me ripped off of uh, the internet? Do you want me to look for, for you, dude? It's fine. Okay. Oh, God, here. no. Oh, no. Welcome to Virtuous Pedophile. Is this legal what to this? look at? Uh, just get yeah, out of there. Get it's just an article. There. It's an article. Okay. It's literally right. just an article. Oh, okay. This is literally a website for an organization. We operate a support group for pedophiles who are committed to avoiding having sexual contact with children. More than 2,000 pedophiles have signed up for the group. Uh, is there any proof that there's, you know, how can you prove that they're just talking, uh, they're not talking out their ass? Well, how can you prove that a member of, you know, AA it doesn't just have a bunch of bottles in his basement? It doesn't matter about about how AA verifies any of this shit. That's not relevant. <laughs> Nobody's talking about Alcoholics Anonymous. This is about pedophiles. The fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Oh my god, I can just imagine it. Where, oh my god, this fucking equivalency. Look, unless 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 the alcoholic is molesting the bottles, I really don't think that this is that's even close to anything that would be sort of considered an equivalent factor. Oh my god, I can just imagine that where <laughs> someone questioning the fucking bottle of vodka. Where did the, where did the bad alcoholic put his lips on you? Where did he touch you? Show us show us on the doll. <laughs> Virtuous pedophiles. That's a that's a new one. That's a hot one. I like that. I like that. Just call something virtuous. Call something very fucking abhorrent. Just call it virtuous if somebody is considered holier than thou for the absolute degenerate that they are. 
especially when it's something like pedophilia. That's great branding. I like that. That's like it's like if you called a fucking assassin a cleaner. You know, it's it's just it's all about branding. And sure, it's the same fucking thing. But if you if you pretty it up, oh, all the difference it makes. Well, no, see, Your Honor, I didn't exactly commit murder. What I actually did was an extrajudicial killing. Sure, it's the same exact fucking thing, but it sounds better. Well, that's just gonna do it for this commentary. Like I said, I promised you a video on Growly, and that is coming, but I just sort of needed to contextualize the people who defend Growly, as well as the sorts of arguments they make, while giving you a few glimpses into the things Growly has done and the conversation going on around him. I will be uploading that video about Growly fairly soon, should be done in the next few weeks. I just want to be able to make sure I get all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed, especially considering the new information that's uh, been coming out this month. Um, links to the artists who do my character stills are in the description below, as well as the pinned comment, as well as For No Good Reasons channel. Um, this stream was on his channel, it's three hours long, I'll be linking that as well. And if you've got time and the patience for the autism that was on display there from Farlito, I definitely recommend it because it is different. It's different. I, I can't say better, but it's different. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later.